its primary day in Pennsylvania. But with the presidential nominations clinched, neither of the candidates is in the swing state. Instead, President Biden is on the campaign trail in Tampa, Florida, while former President Donald Trump once again sat in a Manhattan courtroom for testimony from former tabloid executive David Pecker and a gag order hearing. I'd love to talk to you people. I'd love to say everything that's on my mind, but I'm restricted. President Biden was speaking about abortion access in Tampa ahead of a new six-week ban that takes effect in Florida next week and taking aim at his likely Republican challenge. There's one person responsible for this nightmare, and he's acknowledged and he brags about it, Donald Trump. Let's cover the split screen in what any other way, a split screen. Robert Costa in New York, Aaron Navarro in Tampa. We'll get to Aaron in a moment. We begin with Robert, who is outside the courthouse in lower Manhattan. Let's begin with the gag order hearing. What exactly, Robert, did prosecutors and Trump's attorneys argue over today? And what kind of penalty could the former president face? The prosecution argued that Trump has already violated the gag order in this case with a blizzard of social media posts that reference witnesses like his longtime lawyer, Michael Cohen. And Trump faces possible contempt of court, even some temporary incarceration and some financial penalties should the judge decide to move in that direction. But for now, it's TBD unresolved. The judge has not yet weighed in exactly on how he's going to handle the gag order. And we have no sense of when he'll weigh in, right? It'll be soon. Okay. Much of the day was about testimony from David Pecker, the former National Enquirer publisher. What to you stood out in his testimony today? David Pecker is someone who has, for many years, been in the Donald Trump circle. He's someone who's close to the former president, going back into the 1980s, 1990s, when they were in certain circles together. But it was really in that 2015 period where he become, became someone who was helpful to the Trump presidential campaign. And the prosecution zoomed in on that moment in August of 2015 when the Trump campaign, Michael Cohen, Hope Hicks, Donald Trump, they met with David Pecker. And Pecker offered his services, in effect. He said he was willing to work with the National Enquirer to protect Trump's reputation, to do so-called catch-and-kill operations, to kill any story that's seen as unfavorable to Trump. And I, I guess in that instance, that relationship that was established between the then businessman and the then publisher to run or publish positive stories and catch any negative stories uh, about Trump and then publish negative stories about his rivals, what would be inherently wrong or illegal about that relationship? Because it fell under the radar of a presidential campaign operating under federal regulations for campaign finance, for anything with a campaign needs to be fully disclosed, can't be hidden from public view, often needs to be disclosed to voters, to federal authorities. So you had, in, in effect, in the, in the eyes of the prosecution, a catch-and-kill criminal conspiracy that Donald Trump used to forward his own political ambitions that was never disclosed, and that... It was not only improper, but illegal for Trump ultimately to pay Stormy Daniels through Michael Cohen, his lawyer, in coordination with the National Enquirer just days before the 2016 election. What we saw today from David Pecker's testimony was the building of an origin story for the prosecution where they had him talk about his longtime relationship with Trump. So we understood as listeners, but especially those in the jury listening, understood that Pecker was someone who knew Trump built this relationship with Michael Cohen, and ultimately it yielded this payment to Stormy Daniels. But Stormy Daniels wasn't the only uh, instance where this relationship ended up in a so-called catch-and-kill payment. There were others that were detailed today, one to a former doorman in the Trump building, another to someone who has alleged to have had an affair with Trump. It must be said that Trump denies all wrongdoing, and he has denied these sorts of encounters and affairs. And it's, you know, for those that have tracked this over the last several years, I think we've heard all this, we've heard all this. They have to establish those facts in court for that jury because it's ultimately in the hands of those 12 people. Uh, Robert Costa there in Lower Manhattan, thank you for joining us. We'll hear from you later in the week as the case continues.